Hi everybody and happy Friday. Um, today I thought we would talk about how to interpret NMR lipid data. So over the last couple of weeks I had two pretty interesting lab reports come back that really were great illustrations of how our typical lipid profiles can be problematic um, when looking at risk in any individual patient. So what we know about a typical lipid profile is that actually we miss risk in 50 to 75 percent of patients. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why and about what you might learn if you get an NMR lipid profile done and how to look at these results and make any sense out of them. First, let's talk about a typical lipid profile and LDL cholesterol. So I've done lots of little discussions on LDL cholesterol in the past, so we won't get into all the details, but I wanna to touch base on LDL in a regular lipid profile versus in an NMR profile. So let's talk about LDL first that you typically see. So LDL that we see on a typical lipid profile is something called LDLC or LDL cholesterol. Basically, it's telling you about how much lipids there are that are being carried. In other words, it's essentially telling you about cargo, okay? Cargo, and let's give this LDLC a number. Let's just say it was 100 for some given person. All right, well, when it comes to cholesterol, look, there's no symptoms of high cholesterol. We don't care what your cholesterol is. We care only if the cholesterol can cause problems with vascular disease. So when it comes to cholesterol, the importance is all about risk. So if we're interpreting something, we don't wanna just know about some arbitrary number. We wanna know how that number represents risk. Okay. The thing about risk is risk doesn't track with the cargo and cargo or LDLC is the way we have historically looked at this. Well, instead, what we want to look at again is what's important for vascular risk. Vascular risk tracks with the vehicle the cargo is being carried in. In other words, a cargo or an LDLC of 100 can be carried two different ways. It can be carried in many small vehicles. Cargo, 100. Or that cargo can be carried in just a few large vehicle, but it, vehicles. But again, cargo is still 100. So it's the vehicle that's going to count when it comes to the vascular risk. So here we go, many small vehicles, high risk. A few large vehicles, low risk. So when it comes to risk, there are two things that we're concerned about. L, D, L, not C, but P. And the P stands for particles how many vehicles are carrying this arbitrary amount of cargo. And then the other thing that we care about is how many of those vehicles are small and dense. So small, dense LDL, okay? This is small, dense, high risk. This is what we call large, buoyant LDL particles. They are lower risk. So LDLP versus small dense LDL. So let's take a look at the couple of cases that I had over the last couple of weeks so that we can kind of see how the looking at the LDLP instead of the LDLC can paint a totally different picture. And again, it's the picture that actually tracks with the risk. So this is the one we want to be focused on. 
So here we go, patient number one. Patient number one came in. This is a patient who had heart disease, okay? So this patient's LDL goals are the lowest that we have. Someone with pre-existing heart disease, we know we want to get the LDLs low. Well, let's take a look. This patient's LDLC, okay, the one we're typically looking at, was 82. All right, pretty good, huh? Pretty good, we're pretty pleased with that. Everybody could look at that and say, we're doing a great job here, LDLC is 82. But wait, now we look at the NMR data and we get a very different picture. This patient's LDLP was 1,952. Okay, for someone with pre-existing heart disease, our LDLP goal would be under 1,000. We're far from goal. We're double where we want to see this person be. But again, let's take a look because here we looked like we were doing pretty hunky-dory because we want to be under 100, maybe under 70 for this person's LDLC. But again, when we took a better look, what we see is that this person was anything but controlled. All right. Patient number two, different story here, opposite. This is a patient, female, in her 50s, no history of heart disease. So everyone wanted to put her on a statin medication, why? Because her LDLC was 154, which is on the higher end, agreed. But let's take a look at what her NMR data showed us. Her LDLP was 1106. Someone without pre-existing heart disease, this is great. This is not someone who needs any kind of medication. But you can see here, if we looked at the LDLC data, we'd be seeing the complete opposite of what the vascular risk picture really is showing us. And that is so important. So then I want to bring this back to our low carb, high fat diet here and talk about what kind of changes can we see with that? Well, in most people, we will actually see a decrease in the LDLP number. Not in everyone. As we've talked about in lectures in the past, about 30% of people may actually have a rise in LDLP. But one of the incredibly consistent things that we see with a low carb, high fat diet is we can actually change the kind of vehicles. So we can change from having small dense vehicles to having these large buoyant vehicles. Now that's something that's very difficult to do with other methods. Mainly I'm speaking about medications here because medications like statins do a bang up job of lowering our LDLC. They can even lower the LDLP, but they don't generally change the kind of vehicle. So they don't take it from being a small dense predominant vehicle to being a large buoyant vehicle, but a low carb, high fat diet can do that. So ultimately, I think we're gonna find that there's gonna be a great marriage here. A lot less medicine is needed than we are currently prescribing. I feel very strongly of that. But there are certain people who are going to need medication help, and there's probably a brilliant marriage in here between nutrition and medications. So I hope this helps explain a little bit about what an NMR uh, lipid profile actually is looking at and how to interpret these different LDL numbers. Now, in addition to that, on your NMR profile, you'll find a whole bunch of size. Okay, HDL is this size, VLDL is this size, and we don't have enough data right now to say, okay, we want a certain size, this size, we're gonna manipulate things to be all these perfect ways. The reason for those numbers more than anything from a practical clinical standpoint right now is that they all get plugged into an equation to calculate something called an LP. PIR score, which stands for lipoprotein insulin resistance score. And again, believe it or not, insulin resistance is very well determined by our cholesterol profile. 
which most people find pretty surprising. But the NMR lipid profile shows us so much more information. And again, picks up risk when we think it's otherwise well controlled, but also shows us that some people who may have an elevated LDL-C number really don't need medication like we might think. Either way, it's important information to know. So I hope this helps everyone. I'll be answering another question next week. I think we're going to talk next week about ketone bodies, whether you need to measure them or not. Have a wonderful weekend.